formally following the predetermined path very closely. An excellent launch so far. All right, so congratulatory me messages uh, spreading all across uh, the ISRO team uh, and what a success it is indeed. Uh, le uh, let me uh, bring in our expert at this point in time, uh, Professor Sh uh, Shivram, who's there uh, with us from Bangalore. Uh, Professor Shivram, really indeed uh, quite a success. It is a zero error uh, z uh, zone that we are really looking at. Two years ago, the launch pad saw uh, an unfortunate crash just seconds after the vehicle was launched uh, uh, because just of a, uh, of, of a very minor uh, error. Uh, you know, things like that would have really been playing on the scientists mind but all of that put behind everything on track and uh, we just saw a jubilant ISRO team. Yeah, it's almost a perfect textbook launch. Hello? Ye yes, Professor, continue. Yeah. Yeah, it's almost a perfect textbook launch so it's really the, you know, the important first steps have already been taken so it's well on its way now to the moon so we can look forward to the, you know, the other uh, stages also being equally successful. So now, uh, so that's really a historic uh, landmark in the uh, Indian Space Flight Program and uh, really right. a, you know, real breakthrough and we can look forward to, you know, the mission being completed right. now. Right, we're hoping for further breakthroughs and coming in from yeah. ISRO as well. But sir, give us a sense of the fact that uh, it, the findings of, uh, of Chandrayaan will really help uh, uh, Indian science, will really help develop uh, uh, a lot of sectors in terms of the kind of uh, uh, data that we're going to get from the Chandrayaan, especially uh, on account of Helium-3, uh, an element that is being sought by scientists over there, which could help, uh, in, uh, you know, in the energy, in the energy sector. It could... Uh, if mined properly, it could really provide uh, uh, trillions of watts of uh, energy, couldn't it? Yeah, helium-3 is, uh, you know, one of the uh, attractive uh, uh, things which uh, people uh, want to mine on the moon. And this thing is quite scarce on the Earth. And uh, the thing is, uh, helium-3 we use in what's called thermonuclear uh, reactions. And uh, uh, it is an advantage over tritium, apparently. Deuterium and tritium, you know, are the things which are used in the controlled nuclear fusion reactors. And uh, they produce neutrons. And uh, neutrons add to the radioactivity. So in a sense, it's uh, very similar to conventional reactors which produce neutrons and add to the radioactive waste, you know, which must be disposed of. But helium-3 uh, will interact with deuterium to produce uh, helium-4 and a proton. So it's all charged particles and, you know, it can be sort of power can be directly tapped. So that's right. the idea. And uh, about 40 tons of, uh, 40 to 50 tons of helium-3 will sort of uh, serve all the needs of a country like US, you know, which, uh, which is the world's largest consumer. And uh, apparently there are a million tons or so of helium-3, uh, you know, beneath the surface of the moon up to a depth of a meter or so. And this is what they hope to, uh, uh, hope to sort of uh, right. uh, trap. And uh, so, so that way, you know, that's one of the things. Of course, apart from that, uh, Chandrayaan will also be looking for uh, materials like titanium, you know, and uh, magnesium, manganese, and so on, which are quite important for, uh, uh, see, many of these uh, minerals are quite rare on the earth and may be exhausted, you know, the rate of consumption may be exhausted in a few decades. So people are looking at uh, the moon as a, right. you know, prospective source for elements like titanium and aluminum right. and so on. All right. So Chandrayaan will, you know, in its, uh, yeah. All right, we, we'll, we'll come back to you. So for, for, will, right, we'll come back to you for more on that, Professor Shivram. But uh, just, uh, of course, that is uh, w once the uh, once the Chandrayaan actually starts conducting all its experiments, uh, the really fulfills the purpose why it's actually there. But let's also get a sense of what is happening right now, uh, or how exactly it is going to be pushed into orbit. All the technical aspects we've tried to uh, explain it in a in a simpler fashion. Let's just take a look at what really the Chandrayaan and how really is it going to be pushed into orbit, and what really will happen in these next few minutes. SLB rocket will first hurl Chandrayaan into a swooping orbit around the Earth. Thrusters will then fire at short intervals, flinging the satellite into an even larger orbit. Then, at a pre-calculated moment, the engines will fire again, kicking the satellite out towards the moon. After six days and four lakh kilometers, Chandrayaan will first circle the moon from a thousand kilometers away. Then, over two weeks, thrusters will slowly alter its orbit again, lowering it down to a hundred kilometers above the moon. In New Delhi, Jemon Chuzu. 
All right, so that is uh, what is going to happen in the next couple of minutes uh, for the Chandrayaan. Remember, remember, it has separated from its uh, launch vehicle. That is uh, where it stands at the moment. We'll, of course, continue our coverage of the Chandrayaan here on CNN IB. And it is a historic day. We've just witnessed history being made at the Sri Harikota Space Station. We'll continue our chat with our expert, uh, uh, Professor Shivaram, as well, along with our correspondent, Deepa Balakrishnan, who's there, who witnessed that historic event. Uh, uh, but we'll take a very short break at this point. But the news and updates continue and, of course, focus on Chandrayaan. Who stay with us?